Hi, and welcome to the Apocrypha Apocalypse. I'm Gary Machuda, and uh, I wasn't planning on making this into a two-parter, but I think I will, because I, I've received emails uh, over the years about people asking, when does Jesus use the Deuterocanon? And so I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I released a video titled, If Sirach is Good Enough for Jesus, you know, it should be good enough for us. So uh, we looked at how Jesus expounds on the book of Sirach, and I thought, you know what, why don't we do another one? Because there's lots of other places where Jesus uses the deuterocanonical books. So uh, we're going to do another episode. This time it's going to be on the Gospel of John and where Jesus uses Sirach 24 in a very interesting way. So fasten your seatbelts, folks, because the Apocrypha Apocalypse is about to begin. All right, so um, we are going to take a look at another passage where Jesus uses a deuterocanonical book, and he uses it in a very interesting way. And this probably is why it doesn't come up as a quotation, because it's more of an accommodation. Jesus is quoting from the book of Sirach, but he's accommodating it in order to say something very powerful about himself. And the parallel is between John 6.35 and Sirach 24 and 20, some translations will have a different versification, just FYI. So what's going on here? In John, Jesus is giving his bread of life discourse, and he says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. Okay, and we're very familiar with this, especially Catholics who are familiar with the Blood of Life discourse. But what you might not have known is that Jesus is doing something very profound in this particular sentence. Indeed, it's clear that he's using and uh, quoting, but he's accommodating the quote from the book of Sirach. In chapter 24, 19 through 23, Sirach writes, in the voice of wisdom. Now, remember, uh, there are portions in Sirach, especially 24, where Sirach is speaking as a personification of God's wisdom. So this is God's wisdom speaking here. And God's wisdom says, quote, Come to me, all you that yearn for me, and be filled with my fruits. You will remember me as sweeter than honey, better to have than the honeycomb. He who eats of me will hunger still. He who drinks of me will thirst for more. He who obeys me will not be put to shame. He who serves me will never fail. All this is true of the book of the Most High's covenant, the law which Moses commanded us, as an inheritance for the community of Jacob. Sirach 24, 19 through 23. And like I said, in some Bibles, it'll be 18 through 22. Now, what's really interesting here is Jesus is clearly taking his text from Sirach, okay? You can see the substance that it is a quotation from Sirach, except for one major difference, and that is that Jesus is changing the text of Sirach in a very profound way. Now, before I discuss what that change is and what does it mean, I want to show you that this is not something that I concocted or some Catholic is trying to read into the text. This is something that's recognized by Protestant scholars. And indeed, early Protestants uh, also recognize the connection between these two passages. For example, in the word biblical commentary, uh, it says that uh, this idea of uh, coming and never hungering and thirsting, it says this. One who so comes and believes will never hunger and never, never thirst, for this use of the symbolism of eating and drinking, cf. Isaiah 55 1, of the eschatological salvation through the word of God, Proverbs 6 5, of wisdom, and especially Sirach 24 21. 
Quote, whoever feeds on me will be hungry for more. And whoever drinks from me will thirst for more. Unquote. Here, too, wisdom is in mind, although the writer significantly immediately identifies it with the Torah. Okay, so why don't we look at those two uh, parallels and then we'll talk a little bit more about Sirach. Isaiah 55, 1, and we'll get a couple of other verses too, because I don't think just verse 1 encapsulates this, but here's what Isaiah says uh, through the, the voice of God. All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread and your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well and your delight in rich fare. Okay, so you can see that there is some points of contact here, obviously, um, although it speaks about being thirsty and, um, and coming. There's nothing about believing. Uh, there is a reference to bread. Um, nothing about hunger or fur th thirst, except for maybe where it says that um, that uh, these things will fail to satisfy. So I think very distant, uh, perhaps echo of Isaiah 55, one could be seen here, but I don't think anything really jumps out as being a deliberate parallel that Jesus is drawing from Isaiah 55, one. Uh, what about Proverbs 6, five? Well, this is even more distant. Proverbs 6, five reads, free yourself as a gazelle from the snare or as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Nothing really there as you continue. It says, go to the ant, O sluggard, study her ways and learn her wisdom. For though she has no chief, no commander or ruler, she procures her food in the summer, stores up provisions for the harvest. Yeah, I don't see anything really th there that would consider a parallel. But as we just read in Sirach 2421, uh, the words are strikingly similar to Jesus. And I think it would be very difficult to deny that there is a parallel going on. In fact, the word biblical commentary, when it says, especially Sirach 24, 21, actually reproduces the lines, whoever feeds on me will be hungry for more, and whoever drinks of me will be thirst for more. It says, here too, wisdom is in mind, although the writer significantly immediately identifies it with the Torah. So the word biblical commentary, which is a premier Protestant commentary, sees, yes, there is definitely at work here in the words of Jesus, um, Sirach. Another Protestant commentary is John, an introduction and commentary by Colin Cruz. Um, in the commentary, uh, he says, quote, those who come to Jesus, that is, those who believe in him, are brought into relationship with God, and their hunger and thirst to know God are satisfied. See commentary on 4, 13 through 14, which is, by the way, the section in the Word Biblical Commentary where we quoted. And then in the footnote, it's interesting that it says, Sirach 24, 21, speaking of the Torah, says, Whoever feeds on me will be hungry for more, and whoever drinks from me will thirst for more. While the terminology is similar, the difference between the statements in Sirach and the gospel is obvious. And yes, it is. And we'll talk about that in a second. So Protestant commentaries uh, see this link between Jesus' words in John and his use of Sirach 24. And this this was also seen in many early Protestant translations as well. For example, here are some clips that you can see the cross references made. Here is the Zurich Bible, 1534. Um, then you have the Tavener's Bible. This is a link cross reference from Sirach to the Gospel of John. Likewise, uh, in various editions of the Geneva Bible, here is a picture of the Geneva Bible, 1557, from the book of John to Sirach. Also in the Geneva Bible, 1560, 
we have John the Sirach and also Geneva Bible 1583 from John de Sirach. There's also the Spanish so-called Bearer Bible of 1569. As you can see here, also cross-references John to Sirach. So this connection of Jesus speaking about uh, hunger and thirst and it's being satisfied in him is linked to Sirach by older Protestants and also by some modern biblical commentaries by Protestants. Uh, the same connections are found in works on the, the uh, formation of the canon, like Lee McDonald's uh, work on the formation of the biblical canon song. Okay, so someone will say, okay, well, it's different though, because Sirach is talking about the Torah, Jesus is talking about himself. Sirach says that if you come to the Torah and drink, you'll be thirsty for more. And if you uh, come to the Torah and uh, eat, you'll be hungry for more, essentially. But Jesus says that you won't be hungry and won't be thirsty. And that's exactly the point. Jesus changes or accommodates Sirach in order to say something about himself in a very profound way. In other words, he's saying that the word of God contained in writing, the Torah, is such that you'll keep returning over and over again because you thirst for more and more wisdom. Yet he identifies himself as wisdom itself. And therefore, if you come to him, you will never hunger for more. And if you believe in him, you'll never thirst for more. In other words, he's the very source of the wisdom that was encapsulated in the Torah in writing. And so he's the very font, which satisfies all our hunger and thirst. Now, again, this isn't just my opinion, but you can see this also in Protestant scholarship as well. For example, in William Dubney's work, The Use of the Apocrypha in the Christian Church, he says the following. Our blessed Lord himself did not disdain to employ them. Wisdom says of herself, Ecclesiasticus 2421, they that eat me shall yet be hungry, and they that drink me shall yet be thirsty. It is difficult to suppose that our Lord was not thinking of these words when he said, Saint John 635, he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. The wisdom known to the son of Sirach was so good that men would long to eat and drink of her again, but Christ inserts the negatives, not to contradict, but to raise the thought into a higher sphere, signifying that his wisdom was all-satisfying, and would leave no longing in the souls of those whom he fed. William Hefer Daubney, The Use of the Apocrypha in the Christian Church, page 13. So here we have a uh, Protestant, William Dubney, certainly someone who did not accept the Deuterocanon as inspired scripture, but nevertheless admitting that our Lord himself uses Sirach 2421, and he doesn't contradict it. He doesn't negate it, but rather what he does by changing or accommodating it, he is bringing this thought to a different dimension because he's not referring to wisdom as is in scripture in the Torah, but rather he is talking about wisdom itself, the, the very font of wisdom, the wisdom of God in the power of God, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3. Now, does this text prove that Sirach is inspired scripture? Well, I would say no, it doesn't. Jesus is using this text in a very profound way. And I think, although it may not be a slam dunk as far as proving that it's inspired and sacred, on the other hand, I think it's just as difficult to say that this is just human apocrypha. First, why would Jesus use human apocrypha to make this point? It seems like something about the wisdom of God in the Torah would have to be coming from a sacred source. I think that would be the most natural source in which he would use this. And he also uses it as a pivot to show his own divinity, that he is the one that can satisfy all hunger and thirsting. 
um, I don't think an apocryphal text could be used like that. That seems to me very strange and foreign. So just like uh, the other texts where Jesus expounds on Sirach and Matthew, um, I think here in John 6, I think this is a very interesting passage that certainly lends credence to the possibility that Jesus himself accepted Sirach as scripture and used it as such in order to say something more profound about himself. Now, uh, that's just my opinion, but nevertheless, like I said, Dabney pretty much agrees with that. And I think uh, it's undeniable that Jesus is using Sirach and using it in a very profound way. So this is a short video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. If you haven't, we appreciate it. Till next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.